What's happening, everybody? And welcome to Speaking Geeky. I, as always, am your host, Mr. Geeky. I'm very excited because our guest on today's show is someone who works directly with Transformers, TMNT, Silverhawks, Thundercats, the worst, and a handful of other incredibly fun stuff we can't discuss just yet. So yeah, this is sure to be an incredibly fun show. And of course, I'm talking about none other than Super 7's brand manager, Mondo. Welcome, Mondo. Hey, Geeky. Thanks for having me. Of course. First of all, we're thrilled to have you here. And we're definitely going to jump into all those properties that I just listed before, too. But first, I wanted to give you the opportunity to tell any of the maybe couple remaining people out there who somehow haven't heard about Super 7 and the awesome stuff you all do. A little more about what you do and what's out there right now from the various lines you manage that you're most excited for fans to know about, as well as maybe what brought you to Super 7. That's a lot, I know. So we'll take it take one more time. <laughs> All right. So my name is Mondo and then my official title at Super 7 is Senior Design Manager. I lead a team of designers and sculptors on a variety of whole projects. My official team name is Retro Toys. And with that name, a lot of the brands that I work on are more focused on retro toys. So some of the amazing brands that I get to work on would be Transformers, TMNT, Thundercats, Silverhawks, anything that has to do with most retro toy brands that we've all kind of grown up with, along with a variety of like old movie projects that I can't always uh, share because they're not released. But uh, from there in my role, I get to um, help develop the creative vision and work towards like what these toys are going to be, working out what characters are going to be in a line, how we keep the line consistent. Say it's a Thundercats and you're in wave six and you're trying to make sure it stays consistent with the rest of the previous waves, working on that stuff, trying to figure out what accessories, what kind of experience we want more than anything else for our fans to have with our product and a lot of looking back and remembering back to the experiences we all had as kids enjoying these things for the very first time and how we want to emulate that experience is that childhood amazing experience we all had enjoying our toys and what we're able to bring from our childhood back to this uh, modern time into our toys where we're just constantly looking for creative ways and ideas ideas and accessories to emulate that experience and, and just kind of bring it back to life again. So aside from managing a team, I also get to design on a lot of really cool projects, mostly work on ultimates, some of the previously or not yet released, I should say, projects that I have been my favorite here so far are on Super Cyborgs. And I can't wait for those in particular to come out because I'm a big fan of robots. If, if if you can't see from all the robots around me here. So it's a beautiful setup you have there. I want to just say, okay. just kind of as a as a, an element of appreciation, because I think that you are capturing that really well, allowing the new generation as well as the old generation to be able to add layers onto their toy collecting experience. Yeah. And it's really fun to see that because it's helping to bridge generations there too. Uh, I think towards TMNT is a good example there where you're seeing a lot of the old style kind of figures, but done in a way where you're building on that and you're helping to allow folks just coming into it for the first time, the opportunity to be able to experience and appreciate it alongside those who have gone through it as kids, you know? And that's a really special. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. And this happened a lot too as kids because really like there's so many more ways to find cool toys these days compared to growing up in the 80s, 90s, where we just have TV and maybe friends at school that tell us about <laughs> toys, right? <laughs> but it's it's just that. It's kind of going back in time and rediscovering this old thing that was a relic that no one knew about, that uh, maybe you didn't grow up with it, but you're familiar with the brand because of a new iteration of it. And then you get to experience it in a whole new way, right? That maybe someone that came before you that grew up with it got to experience it. So you get to appreciate like a new facet of that brand that you hadn't had the opportunity to experience in this amazing new 
figure format. 100%. So with Ninja Turtles, that's another one that I get really excited about. There's like a line with collectors, right? Where some of them started with G.I. Joe and kind of maybe were too old for TMNT at the time of TMNT or and then caught up on that later in life. Or they were just at that right Goldilocks age where they're, you know, this is like they're catching it as it was coming on. Were you one of those folks that were watching it as the series was going on or was this something you came back to as an adult? TMNT was definitely one of those brands that I actually got to experience and enjoy as a kid. So I definitely got to watch a lot of the episodes as they were happening, whether it be Saturday mornings or afternoons. That was definitely something that was on my watch list back then. So TMNT, definitely a big fan of that growing up. You, you're telling me also that you collect the uh, the Playmates toys. You had the... Yeah, you know, yeah. The What's fun to me is, and I'm sure you know this too, is that there are so many many that never made it out to us. And it's shocking when you see what some of these characters were because they were so much fun. And I've seen this with Super 7 that they're finding ways to bring some of that in. Like with like Quack Up as an example, the Quack Up head uh, that was the- Yeah, um, yeah, the, definitely. Yeah, and, and, and Gorilla, I mean, Gorilla Gorilla was from the magazine, but he also was conceptually kind of, you know, yeah interchangeable in, in, in some ways with Sergeant Bananas. Um, right. They're different stories with the characters, but it's a fun extra nod to fans. I think that we were getting to see Gorilla Gorilla finally too. Are there characters that other folks may not realize are there, <laughs> may not realize are, are you know, uh, part of that rich history that you are really excited to potentially let folks see for the first time at some point down the road here as the line progresses? Yeah, I think there are those opportunities. Again, um, not like to go away from the strategy that we have that we're kind of way deep into of waves of characters that are inspired by the original toy line. We all love the original toy toy line here at Super 7. And again, I grew up with it, so I love it too. But we're always looking for ways to like innovate or create something new uh, around the experience that, that our product creates. So we try to look for ways that there are some figures at times that kind of feel like they're almost the tune version too. So it's like, how do you make that different from maybe what someone else is doing or has done before? So looking past that, we love to, and I I spend a lot of time doing this, like reimagining, like, or going back to those original lines, the what ifs, asking those questions of those lines, right? I think you had an interview with uh, Chris Fawcett with Red Plastic, right? And that's a book that I have as well. And I just love the what ifs, the amazing potential, all those unique and different um, iterations of Turtles are in there. We can't always go back to those because of the rights are always a little murky in terms of like, maybe it went to someone who drew it or like, mm. or to a different license holder. It's that stuff tends to be a little hard to track down and confirm. But going expanding out past the toys, again, we definitely see ourselves aside from like toy makers as storytellers. And so we like to just infuse these toys with those storytelling opportunities. And what are other things? What are the what ifs of TMNT? And like, what if we got a different type of mashup turtle character than the one we did, right? So we're definitely like exploring those. We're also looking at comics and throughout that rich history right there in, in comics and in the different characters that came through there. But again, there's so much potential and opportunity just with the toys that we just don't want to like, I mentioned Rat King earlier. We still haven't made an Ultimates Rat King. We got to make an Ultimates Rat King. So it's, there's still those characters in there that we're looking at to explore as an ultimate, but also like what's that little extra something that the lore from a comic that could bring cool accessories or look or colorway to a character that we're familiar with or we're like have yet to explore. So that's definitely something that we're, we're excited to 
keep wanting to do. We want to make sure we keep everything special and magical and it doesn't feel like we're just taking the old toy and just kind of piece by piece recreating it. We want to make sure that it's something like the original, but it's a, it's an upgrade, right? It's a, the ultimate version of what that could have been. Yeah. I mean, when you think back to the original, so much of the fun with it was the idea that like we are seeing, yes, it's a whole bunch of brand new characters that we haven't seen before, but it's also characters that we have seen in ways that you don't expect to come, right? You know, it's like like we, we were saying before about the variants, right? The, the, the various different iterations of the turtles. And when you say that there's the ability to potentially do fun new mashups, the super nerd in me is just my, <laughs> my spidey sense went up and I'm like, does that mean that there's the possibility that there could be wholly original types of characters that we may know in some form, but we might be seeing something completely new and, and different than we've ever seen? I think there's definitely some potential for that. Like when I think of mashups, I think of, uh, for example, like we haven't done this but NECA did Universal Monsters Turtles right and we saw it in the original toy line of course but looking at that potential like what what can you do with that or coming up with new things that that take an idea of a character that we know from the original and create it in a way that it feels like you really have to go back and like how did I miss this as part of the original toy line and recreating something in a way that it just felt like it's a must have but it's always been there mm -hmm. when it really wasn't there are, are things that we're definitely looking at trying to bring to the table here. Oh, yeah. It's funny how much there is of that because there think there's a lot of folks uh, and I've had some very funny conversations because the mind has a way of remembering things a certain way. And I think because a lot of people had the toys, it's like the interactions and the memories are connected to playing with those toys. So there are plenty of folks that could have sworn Fugitoid was in the cartoon or could have sworn that Panda Khan was in the cartoon. And it's, and it's like, Neither of those characters were in the cartoon, but they very much had toys. But it's very funny to me because people will, this is the hell I'm going to die on. This is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, right. it, and yeah. And it, and technically, you know, I mean, Future Toy did show up in the cartoon at some point, but not, you know, not from the original. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. Yeah. They just like, even with the entertainment, right, the cartoons and all those different versions, they try to bring back some of those characters characters or reinvent them in a whole new way, right? There's a lot of opportunity we're hoping to kind of bring here. Has there been any consideration towards some of the smaller vehicles? Like I think of like the cheap skate or the even even the the turtle inner tubes, <laughs> right? Something for folks who are on a certain budget, right? This is something they yeah. can not a party wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Not, uh, not for easy or difficult payments of whatever, right? Was, yeah, absolutely. I think part of what we did with Thundercats and uh, Mandor and the Electro Charger, looking at that and seeing kind of the reaction and response and support for things like that, we definitely see that there's an opportunity to do more down the line. So we're exploring that without trying to obviously destroy people's wallets here, <laughs> right? And what we're coming back and asking for like we just asked for party wagon money to make that dream a reality so giving fans an opportunity to recover recoup from that before we start shelling out some more vehicles no pun intended there but well played <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but a cheapskate that would be pretty awesome i had a cheapskate a sewer cycle i i see as another like really cool one and then down the line yeah there's so many other awesome vehicles in that line because they just the inner tubes were pretty cool too and we have a sewer mikey we maybe we need a sewer surfing other turtle to kind of join in the fun there with the uh, inner tube who knows lots of opportunities we're excited okay i, li I like where you're going with that <laughs> <laughs> are there any of the turtles that, that are coming out soon that you're excited to be able to show a little bit? Yes, definitely. Two of my favorite turtles that I'd like to share that are coming soon, definitely in production now, because I know that's a fan question we get, like, who's in production? When do we get to see them? When will they be in our hands? So I have two to show here. He's actually been spying on us this whole time here. <laughs> Undercover Raphael. 
now. There he oh. is. Oh, that's Looking beautiful. Amazing. Oh my gosh. And look how many hands. Look at all those hands too. That's great. He's got a ton of hands. They're pretty amazing. There's vertical discs, horizontal discs. There's side gripping hands. So you can get the, the side point in between the fingers there. The soft goods came out amazing. Uh, you got all that, the button details. His belt is real working. You can take that on and off. His alt heads came out great. All of his accessories, they do fit in that briefcase for the most part. He's got the extra camera tripod in there as well. Really cool. Really excited to get this into everyone's hands. An amazing figure. Raf was one of my favorites just because it was one of those projects that I, I just kind of got to jump in and create a lot of cool stuff and do something different. The soft goods, I think, and reimagining the undercover turtle that's kind of been done in different ways throughout the turtle uh, uh, entertainment history there. And I'm holding this up because I got one more thing here wave five Ooh. not ashamed to admit leonardo is my favorite turtle and we <laughs> talked to kyle and i know what that means and i am okay with that so there <laughs> is samurai leo just uh, really cool details really like the plus ups here of course it are that amazing samurai mask there Mm -hmm. That was a really fun idea. Getting the extra, the tuna on the pizza, all those little details are things that we just love to look for those opportunities. And then he is actually a figure that we were able to actually get all these amazing weapons assorted into the figure before all these extra kind of um, costing challenges have come up in more recent days with commodities and all the things that most fans aren't aware of that we are challenged with logistics, shipping stuff over from China, the price of oil. Surprisingly, most people don't realize how much that affects plastic production. That's a huge one. Cost of good sourcing materials, all those things. But people that picked up wave five are gonna get all these awesome <laughs> weapons included with their figure that again, looks super amazing. Very excited for Leo and all the rest of them. We'd probably take up all the time just going through each one of these uh, Wave 5 figures, but the rest of Wave 5 is um, also uh, in production with these guys. So plenty of Turtles figures, Undercover Raph, Leo and the rest of the Wave 5 gang all in production right now in the factory. Very excited. That's there because that's like, yay for us. We're excited that it's there because that means all the hurdles are out of the way. Everything's looking amazing. And um, pretty soon it'll be in fans' hands to enjoy. Oh man, yeah, that's so much fun. Is there something coming up that you, I think is just gonna throw folks for a loop? Coming out of left field, I guess a little bit, but an exciting way. Well, let's see, for Turtles, I actually have in the works at least five different exclusive figures that are coming down the line that are unique and different that I think are a bit unexpected. Not quite what we've seen from other companies or from us. So definitely excited to get those out there. And I think within a month or two, we'll be seeing, especially as uh, cons here roll into New York Comic Con, definitely going to be opportunities to possibly see some new turtles. Oh, I'd like to hear that. The question also I would have is for folks who aren't able to be there on site, is there still opportunity for them to be able to partake in some manner? Yeah, the goal is always to try to make sure we're like including as much as possible. So it'll really come down to a bit of the logistics in terms of what exclusives end up getting slotted for kind of what show. In the past, we did the um, Stay at home con So we're still probably going to do something similar in allowing a certain amount to be a release for purchase. We just have to get there to the convention time frame to really kind of work those logistics out. So we'll see when we get there. 
<laughs> that uh, the glow in the dark foot, by the way, was a very fun surprise. That that's one that uh, I think a lot of folks didn't see coming, and it's like I looked at that and I was like, I didn't know I needed this, <laughs> and I need this. <laughs> but it's yeah. a gorgeous figure. Yeah, it is absolutely. Yeah, just looking at it, it's just something that made sense and didn't <laughs> completely <laughs> exactly but it's like bringing those things to life are definitely the opportunities we're searching for i know you've uh, been a fan of, of turtles for a long time and so you've you've seen all the different iterations as they've came through do you have a favorite iteration of the cartoon or the comics that you identify the most with in terms of turtles nothing has beaten the original for me and i really enjoyed that one the most Got into some of the original turtle movies as well. I even I'll even give a little to the the Babers <laughs> turtle, just a little, just because it was so. It's Michael Bay. And he, he's got explosions and all those things that you can't help to enjoy as a just casual movie. If you could appreciate just going in as a casual movie goer, those things and not feel like they're destroying your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Then you can like those things. I have casually watched most of the rest of the iterations of Turtles, like most of the entertainment. I got into most of the comics early on. I haven't really been into the comics as much recently, but like things like the um, the Last Ronin, for example, like totally just kind of got my eyes back to those things again. So I'm definitely checking that out and like, trying to pour through and spending time with just that whole idea right and it's again it goes back to like those great storytelling keys right there's just something in those what if questions that really like blow up the possibilities of what could be absolutely yeah and i think with blast ronin that that's a story that's like been waiting to come out for a long time too so it's it's fun to, to finally see that all be for consumption right that we finally get to see the ideation like come to the real yeah definitely i'd say a little bittersweet too <laughs> yeah, yeah were you like me when you were watching the cartoon as a kid i'd watch the cartoon and I'd want to read the Mirage comics. And my parents, you know, at that point were, you know, like, well, you can do Archie. Well, you'll have to yeah. wait till you're older to, to read the Mirage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely, yeah, I was on the Archie. The, <laughs> I was on the Archie track too. I would usually, uh, yeah, pick those up in between other random buys. So I would be pretty casual about my comic book reading. Uh, like I'd pour into stories. But as they got into like, yeah, if they did get it like a Mirage level or like I would also get a ton of Marvel comics back in that day too. If the storylines would start to just suck for me in my age level, I'd be like, this makes no sense. Or like, this is boring. Where's all the fighting? Mm -hmm. Like story dialogue, story development and dialogue. What's that? Like, why do we need these things? <laughs> um, I would jump to, yeah, something more like casual, like Archie Turtles or some other stuff there. I guess that was, a, it's, it's a decent segue for, I mean, we were, you brought Mandora. To me, that was super fun to see where this is one of those characters that we've never been able to have before. And when I saw that uh, as being in the offerings, I was like, okay, so now we have some new opportunities here for a whole bunch of other characters that showed up in the cartoon that we just never were able to get, which is surprising because there's such a wealth of possibilities there with the toys that we did get out. But of the stable of characters that we had never seen before, are there some that are topping your list of ones that you're like, okay, that would be really fun in toy form. I'm not not to taint my own thoughts and my own hopes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet now. I'm gonna let you. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking Thundercats. Very. Or turtles? Let's say for both. All right, uh, let's see. What turtles do I definitely wanna? There's just so many for turtles. I'll be honest. <laughs> Any of the characters that resemble robots or have like robotic parts about them, I definitely want to make sure that we're getting into the line. Some more villains, some cool looking character types that are in there or just like completing 
interesting because we we do release certain characters that are tied to subgroups so that could be a potential where like we go back to those and try to fill them in like even with our turtles the like a samurai leo like would it be cool to do a samurai version of raf or someone else the sewer surfers or the the rockin turtles all those guys making sure that you feel like you're filling that in in that sense as a collector let's see in terms of thundercats there are a decent amount of good ones here too <laughs> i know for me personally and in, in kind of my taste and this kind of almost feels like it's a bit of a crossover into the uh the turtle realm but not really i would definitely like to see a hachimon thundercat that would be pretty amazing honestly with lino i feel like we haven't made enough linos maybe people are gonna be like no stop it with the linos give us some other guys like berserkers for example but uh maybe one or two linos are are needed here in the line there's different unique versions i'll say of lino that would be fun to see that are uh, that we haven't seen so much of too I think what's kind of first and foremost is the new releases that were shown, which is really exciting for longtime fans where you get to see some different iterations of Thundercats, you know, where it's the classic LGN kind of look, where, where I think we're a lot of folks, a couple different camps, right? Where you had, wherever you came in on Thundercats is kind of your experience there and everybody loves their version, right? So, and there's some like me who love all the versions, <laughs> but is that looking to be an expansive line as well? Could it be its own thing at some point or is it always to be under the, for here it's it's a new wave, but you know, some folks have said this could be its own spinoff ultimates as well. Do you see the reception being pretty positive so far where that might be a possibility where we could keep seeing more of the LG versions too? Yeah, for Thundercats, from Super 7's perspective, we see that as really just expanding out from what we do or have done successfully with the more tune accurate version of the characters into something, again, like we all grew up with, we all enjoyed the actual toys and the different experience that those bring to the table. Although maybe it would be called Thundercats Ultimates Wave 6. We don't see it as like from now on they're only going to look like or be inspired by LJ and toys we look at it like here's something unique and different here's a different way for you to experience something that you grew up with that you enjoyed that you loved in a slightly different aesthetic look figure format because I mean those toys were pretty awesome right I still have my lino it still functions it's it's back here somewhere look at this bright orange dude here he's so amazing right again we're fans of this like how could you not love this guy look at him my light up eyes still work um you could see him there wow that's um, that's lucky that that's still <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I had, battery. I had to restore this guy here to make sure, get some rust out of that. Uh, you can see the paint doesn't match, right? All that stuff. We go through, we try to research as much as possible as we're developing these lines. The LJN version of the Thundercats was no exception. And there's something unique and different where, like I mentioned earlier, like a lot of my exposure was just straight to the toys. There's a lot of people out there that really just had the toys and every now now and then they got to see the shows, but for the most part, they became fans of the brands through the toys over the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking that same for Thundercats, that there are going to be people out there that were big fans of the way the toys look and just love the aesthetic, the feel of those. And we wanted to make sure we were able to bring those to life, just like we do with the tune version. So we're definitely by no means going away from the, the tune iteration of the figure those are still planned for upcoming waves and we're hoping to get to a lot of those characters that are on everybody's wish list there as well the thing is too with the different versions the different iterations if they appeared elsewhere could they in theory still show up in the ultimates early 2000s thundercats is an example even if there's not like a movement towards that iteration just yet some of those characters are very unique to that series is there and i realize you know there's still so so many more quintessential figures that folks are hoping to see and I'm sure will be coming and looking amazing when they do. But is there 
the possibility there to potentially almost like there's also Masters of the Universe expansive stuff that Super 7 was doing. Could there be something along those lines where we see some of those characters in that classic Ultimates look? I think we could eventually. We're trying not to get ahead of ourselves too much. And if I say probably too much, I think we'll get some fans that are like, wait, you still haven't given me Wily Kid or Wily Cat or where's like this other version of... Where's my snarf? Many- <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, we could, we could go yeah. there too. But uh, we do have some pretty awesome upcoming exclusive Thundercats that will be on the horizon as well. So again, unique different, unexpected, maybe something that uh, fans have been asking for there in some of the Thundercat realm that's unique and different. So I'm definitely excited for those iterations of those exclusives to come out. So really cool stuff coming up. Oh, I'm stoked. (laughs) That's the thing with with Super 7. It's very evident, I think, for folks who are really watching what Super 7 is doing. It's in the mantra, right? It's in the motto. We were making the figures that we never got. And so I think people can lose sight of that because Super 7 is is really doing a lot that we hadn't seen in the past from toy companies and that they are really putting a lot of consideration towards some of those characters that, you know, if you're doing Disney, you know, it's like not just Mickey Mouse, you're also getting the really deep dive characters, right? Thundercats, it's the same way here. You know, we're we're seeing this all over the place with Turtles. Silverhawks, I'm very excited for too, because there's some really fun ones on that end also that we never saw as toys, you know? So I'm excited to kind of see how that all rolls out. But my takeaway from this is that it's not to be seen as LGN is usurping the line, as it were, as much as that this is like the first of many and expansion, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a great way to put it. Did you have favorite Thundercats characters when you were growing up? Other than Lino and Mumra, which were, you know, the, the, the core. Was there another character of the heroes and another character of the, the villains that you really adhered to? Great question. Growing up, I was one of those guys that I had the toys more than the show. So honestly, Lino feels like the default for most people, but Lino is definitely really high up there for me. And I love the 2000 series that you bring up. I love the potential it had <laughs> like why? Yeah. why why'd they take it away so soon i know of all the kind of the world building they did and the opportunity to explore out that you got to see a little bit of in the the cartoon there's been some pretty awesome favorites um, that i've gotten to work on with uh bengali i just love the character the look mandora was another one in the electro charger that i really enjoyed this is one of the original men here, Mandora. <laughs> Yeah. Right, excited to like something that was out there. I'm like, I see what they were doing there, Bounty Hunter. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> what were they uh, inspired by there? So um, there's characters like that. And, and again, Mumra, it's like that guy was a beast. Like it's hard to compare in terms of villains to that. But uh, again, another one that I really enjoyed working on here is Hammerhand. That was pretty awesome. And it gets a little bit of that robot fix in in there that I'm always looking for in every project that I get. That was always one of my favorites growing up too, because it would have, you got had the clasp, you know, I mean, this was like, yeah. you, got to, you got to hold up the other characters with this guy's hand. It was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and we got that articulation in there on the Ultimates figure of Hammer Hand on his robot hand there. Oh, that's great. Is there a character from the ones that you've worked on that you are the proudest? How yeah, it- yeah. It was definitely a toss up between I really like the way Mandora came out and I think the fact that she has the electro charger it just kind of brings it all together and part of the electro charger is like you get those other opportunities on the show where Lino's writing it and he's with Snarf and like making sure that we're actually able to do that so looking at the design and making sure when you do get that it's like you could immediately you get it and then now you're able to take your Lino plop it on there and now you're waiting for maybe one more guy to be able to fill that in there but it was cool to be able to bring that together and think ahead of the possibilities again around storytelling Mm -hmm. and i think 
because we had that extra piece with the electro charger that's what for me like working on mandora was able to set that character apart for me but hammerhand was pretty awesome too and he's another one like you mentioned like what was magical about him was like the tune version of him was cool but that toy experience right that claw like ah oh, grabbing characters and playing with them right so like who knows with the opportunities for new figure iterations to come into play with what we're doing with future waves like an ljn inspired wave what potential that might bring the possibilities are great here and that, and i think that's what i would say here also is whatever your version was that was was the one that was like your primary here you're having all these other opportunities to expand that out in a really fun way where we haven't been able to do that before you know where they're all to the same scale they're all part of that same world and now you have them all whatever version is your version you know lino can be another character in your mind right when in the, in the imagination you know i had a, fr a friend of mine who didn't know the lgn toys and said to me what is ronald mcdonald doing there <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh, a good way to put it sure Sure. Uh, but then, you know what? That got me excited for a possible Grimace and Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because those will be knocked out of the park by, by you all too, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's another opportunity for people that some people just collect linos, right? Like there's a new version of lino that you have not seen yet and will probably never get again, right? So that's the opportunity for filling out that extra space that you didn't know you needed for in your on your lino show. Mm -hmm. There's just something different. We're all, like I mentioned before, passionate toy collectors here. We love bringing together different ideas from the tune, from the toy, from our own experiences, like how we're passionate about soft vinyl toys, for example. We we love those bright colors. We like exploring different color palettes and material uses to like just create those new and unexpected character iterations for these figures. Yeah, and it's captured so well. They feel very unique to what they are. And it's really a fun thing to see that. And I think you hit this on the head well too with kind of tapping into the what if right? Where from an imagination perspective and from a collecting perspective, it's almost like by having this now, you can replicate the Thundercats world of infinite madness, kind of, <laughs> you know, or into the Spider-Verse for Thundercats, right? Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. It's fun because it's like there are so many great heavy hitters that have already been shown so far, and there's so many wonderful ones that fans really connect in with. So to me, it's really cool that it's been so many waves so so far and there's still so much more to go because it's like the excitement is still strong i think in terms of we know that there's some good primaries that uh, are probably probably not too far off <laughs> at this absolutely point. and um i think we touched on this before but other iterations of the tried and true so plenty of those guys too to <laughs> oh man Well, that's it for part one of our exclusive interview series, but stay tuned because part two is coming right around the corner. We realize you could have been anywhere and you chose to nerd out with us, and we appreciate that. And while you're here, make sure to check out some of our other really cool videos we think that you'll appreciate quite a bit. And if you haven't already, make sure to sub, like, and share with any other folks you think will appreciate the kind of videos we're putting out. So until next week, Speaky, keep it geeky.